All right, stop. Live audience and listen. We are back before you were presented something. Grab a hold of me tightly. Flow like a Jupiter at nightly. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. Hey there, J-Man. Hi. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, dude. This is uh, not my either one of our first shows, but it's our first Jupiter Night of the no, New Year. No, in fact, we released our first show this morning. Yeah, Stoked. Yeah. yeah. So if you haven't watched Stoked yet, it's a good one because this guy over here worked his butt off to make a trailer for a uh, winner of the Foundry submission. It's pretty epic. It's pretty cool. But yeah. uh, we're not here to talk about that. No. We were kind of scratching our heads and thinking, this week is going to be a lot about CES. Yeah, yeah. And I'm already collecting like a lot of really good CES stories mm-hmm. that we'll probably talk about at some point that we think are like the the best of the best. But uh, I was worried that if we went into it too soon, yeah. we'd end up covering a bunch of stuff that's just that pales like, in comparison to exactly. what comes out later. And and it's a big topic right now because honestly we could hold off on that and we could talk about something like New Year's resolutions or something like that, but mm-hmm. that seemed like a really large topic really as big well. One. So we thought maybe we could narrow it down. Yeah, well, I, most of you out there know that one of my primary New Year's resolutions this year is that I've decided to put myself on the Atkins diet. Yeah, the Atkins diet, which you mentioned in one of the episodes, and th- for the most part, people didn't react as strongly as I expected because it's kind of no. a controversial topic. It is still controversial. So let's talk about among that. health professionals, which is actually why I decided to do the show about it tonight. Kind okay. of address some of the uh, the concerns, the myths, the uh, the stuff. And to kind of talk about the the things that I already know that I need right. to overcome to to really get into this and, yeah. and be successful Spe- on this diet. So you are you saying are you saying that I guess one of the criticisms I've heard is that it's just um, you know you're just eating a lot of meats and things like that, which can not necessarily be a healthy thing. Right. Well, a lot of people think that the 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 focus of the diet is kind of like an all you can eat steak diet, or as we are calling it tonight, the bacon diet. Yeah. You know, that's what I was. What, what I asked you before the show. I know it's called Bacon Blast. <laughs> uh, before the show, I asked you. I said, "Okay, dude, are you? Uh, oh, burst, b- bacon burst. Are you doing the Atkins diet just because you love bacon?" Uh, my answer would have to be yes. No, that's not the only <laughs> reason. It's just a perk, really. Okay. The fact that I can have bacon every single day, anytime I want. Oh, sure. That's Why great. would that be a perk? Yeah. But okay. So one of the major concerns that people have is that it's too fatty. Yeah. And high in cholesterol. Right. The diet as a, a whole. Well. To be honest, you have to do your research if you're thinking about going into this diet because there are specific guidelines you have to uh, follow regarding your fat intake, Mm. that only 20% of your total calories can be from fat. That's a hardline guideline, and to to basically stop you from eating too much fat, too much cholesterol. So what would be another source of... uh, Calories? Yeah. Uh, Vegetables and and just uh, high proteins and stuff like that. Bacon. Bacon. As long as it's not too much bacon. Maybe, Maybe turkey bacon. It is true, sadly, that there is such thing as too much of a good thing, mm. and uh, yeah, don't don't over bacon. Okay, because while it would be a great way to go, you don't want to go. Now, <clears throat> I think the primary challenge with any diet, it doesn't matter if it's Atkins or I was mentioning South Beach or mm-hmm. uh, you know. The no fast food diet, that's also a good <laughs> diet to try. Um, the, everything, everything always comes down to can you actually commit to a certain thing. I mean, one of the main right. things about food, the challenge is that uh, it's just a, it's a, it's an enjoying experience. It's a joy. It's a it's a food good experience. Good. It's it's yeah. It's something you look forward to. And yeah, especially some of the things that you've got to give up on most diets. This one included. This one, the breads and stuff would mm-hmm. be difficult for me. Like yeah, the pasta. You can't have a sandwich. And yeah. you are big on the sandwich. I love me a sandwich. Yeah. So now if I get a sandwich put in front of me, I got to open it up and just eat the innards, like some sort of, I don't know. But you're savage. just eating less at that point. I could have a really big sandwich that I only eat the middle out of. <laughs> mm, that's true. Okay, I got you there. Yeah. And and now, you know, the double the double down, the KFC double down, that bird cheese. But those are breaded. Oh. So it's still a fail. Man. I know. All right, what about the other problem I would have is, is there, I guess with Atkins, do you have a daily calorie limit? No, there's no caloric limit. The only limit that you have is your carbohydrate intake. And like okay. I said, the percentage of fat. So would would like having something if it had like no carbs in it, but you could just say you're just sitting there on the couch watching TV. Could you just snack on that? Would that be within the diet? Theoretically, you could gorge, but I don't think that it would be good for you in any way. Well, of course, and it's definitely not encouraged. I I think that's one of the misconceptions that a lot of people have is that they could cook up thirty pounds of bacon and eat it in a single sitting, and it would still be on their diet. Yes. It would, but how is that good for you and in you can, any way? You, you can misuse anything like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, you, I mean, it. 
It's a no lot pizza. of different things. Well, no, and actually Angela gave me leftover pizza for dinner tonight, and I had to eat just the toppings off of it. Aww. Which, to be totally honest, might have still ruined my diet, because I don't know the, the carbohydrate uh, level of the sauce that was in there, that Alfredo oh, sauce. Oh, true. Now, those are usually relatively low, and I can have mo- up to 20 grams a day, so it was probably okay. Mm-hmm. I took that risk. Ooh. But for, for pizza. Yeah. But it's always a good idea to know what you're getting yourself into. Now, <laughs> you know what I love about our uh, chat room? Yes. Right now, do you yeah. see uh, Dr. Cause in the chat room has just hot linked me to a. Uh, well, there's actually a couple people in there that are hot linking me to different bacon things. Yeah. I, well, I, like a sandwich that replaces the bread yeah, with bacon. Yeah. How about this one? It's uh, just a tower of bacon inside two <laughs> pieces of bread. And then. But I couldn't have the bread. So. Look at that. <laughs> a, a bottle of wild turkey in the back there. <laughs> That's a party. That's a party. You know, that's one of the tough things, though, is that uh, at least during phase one, I haven't done a whole lot of research into the later phases, but phase one, no beer, no beer, no sugar, and I'm supposed to limit my caffeine intake even to what they say in the guidelines is roughly one cup a day. Mm, These are difficult, dude. Yeah. Which means, like, I have a cup of coffee to wake up, and I'm going to do that. Um, Why Now, why coffee? Or why caffeine? um, Because it's an appetite suppressant right and it's a diuretic and you're supposed to intake a lot of water on this diet as well how much of a diuretic is it though i, I don't think that one cup would make that yeah, much of a difference think, which yeah. is probably why they say about one cup is fine yeah yeah but if you were chugging back coffee which some people do yeah it, it would make a an impact on you know your i worked with a guy who went on to adkins <clears throat> and you tell me if you've heard of this story he went on to Adkins, and he lost a ton of weight really fast. Mm-hmm. And what ended up happening was his his feet swole up because of all these chemicals that were left in his body, uh, and they went into his feet for some reason, and he couldn't walk walk for a while. He had to have crutches and all kinds of stuff. Have you heard of these kinds of problems? Yeah. Those are actually pretty common in people that don't follow the guidelines of the diet, specifically your water intake. If you increase your water intake to the, <clears throat> excuse me, to the level that is recommended by the Atkins diet, those chemicals get flushed right oh, out of you. Oh, I see. They go right through your liver and your kidney and just go, they get flushed. He, was drink, he probably wasn't drinking enough water. He or wasn't something. drinking enough liquids. Hmm. Hmm. Or he was too much caffeine <clears throat> and other diuretics. You know, um, a lot of people think that, hey, a diet soda is going to be fine on this this diet because it's zero carbs. But it's got caffeine. It's still got caffeine. And some of the other chemicals actually can interact in different ways. So you can't chug back a case of diet soda either, even though it looks like it fits the no carb guideline. A year ago, no, was it a year ago? <clears throat> About a year ago, I lost 20 pounds, uh, basically cutting out fast food and sugar for a while, mm-hmm. which I've not, I've kept up pretty much on the fast food angle, but I'm, you know, I have a pop right off camera right here because I like <laughs> me the sugar. So I don't know. I, I guess I just would, boy, I don't know if I could do it, dude. Well, that's one of the reasons that I've chosen this diet. I'll be straight up honest with you. Any diet is about as successful as any other. Yeah. I mean, if you enjoy the idea of a South Beach diet or a no sugar diet or or whatever, maybe you love bacon as much as I do and you want to try the Atkins diet, um, it really comes down to what's going to work for you. And that's the reason I chose this diet, because it has guidelines that are easy for me to follow right? and easy for me to understand. Right. And It's a system you can work with. It's a system I can work with. And it's not like, there's another really popular diet called the zone, which is basically like you have to work out the math. You have to figure out- well, You kind of like math sometimes. Sometimes, but not when I'm eating. Yeah. <laughs> not when those I'm are, eating. Those are different parts of my brain. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So, you, I mean, you have to like work out ratios of carbs to sugars to fibers to all this crap. And- it, blah. Yeah. I just want to know what I can and can't eat. Yeah. And be able to work with those restrictions. I can totally understand having a system to work with and a routine and a process to follow because when it's difficult, you know, well, no, I just got to keep following this because of this and this and this. So I could see that mm-hmm. to kind of help you actually kind of push through the more challenging yep. times. Interesting. Now, some folks in the chat room, Monk is bringing up sodium, which actually could have been another reason that your friend had the, the swelling feet problem. Too mm-hmm. much sodium can knock off your, your fluid balances and stuff like that. And that is a concern with this because... You've got a high carb, high protein diet. Or, I mean, low carb, high protein diet. That and a lot of those proteins are heavily salted, like bacon. Yeah, uh, has pretty high sodium. Or a lot of steaks, you know, and things mm-hmm. like that. They all, they have a lot of salt on them. So, like, it's not a meat diet. It's actually primarily a salad diet. Um, there's not. I mean, we've been talking about bacon, but really, that's not the primary thing. No, Plus, I know. It's just funny to think of it as a bacon diet. It is. 
<laughs> I, I mean, because he could be if you didn't. But how many other diets can you say that you could eat five pounds of bacon and but still you, be on your diet? But you could also have. But I guess in the spirit of the, the true, in the true spirit of Adkins, the diet would be a good salad, maybe with some bacon on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, uh, uh, that is another thing that a lot of people have mentioned to me. You know, uh, my friends and family and my Twitter followers and stuff like that have mentioned things like, "Well, you don't seem like a real big salad guy, Jeremy. You, you're not a big. I am. I actually love me some salads. When I, I go too. Out, so, uh, not when I go though. out to eat or something. Yeah. I usually take a very close look at those salads. Well, like Apple Apple Be- Applebee's has like a mean uh, Oriental chicken salad. Mm-hmm. And uh, Red Robin has a good salad. A really nice steak salad is amazing with like steak strips on top. I don't of usually it. go for the red meat in a salad. Oh, I, that's great. I could try There's it. There's a though. place in town here that has a great chicken Caesar. Where? That's uh, Cristiano's. Oh, okay. Best Safeway. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, all right. <laughs> I'm sure people out there have their opinion on different diets and what's worked for them. So well, here, before we go oh, I'm on, not wrapping up. up. I'm, just, I'm just letting people know. There just are leave some... a comment. If, so don't, if you're, if you're boiling over, leave us a comment. I won't wrap yeah. up the show. I'm just saying. We're not, we want to hear your input. So at just any so point. Just you know, I'm only two days in. If you've got something yeah, groundbreaking okay. to share with me that's going to scare me off of this, by all means, share it. <laughs> I mean, I've done a lot of research, but there's not, that's not a guarantee that I haven't missed anything. Yep. So there are some major concerns that I still have with this. One of which is kidney stones. Oh, because, yeah, really? Because of the type of stuff that you're oh, taking into your body. Nope. I've already had kidney stones twice. No so this way. this is a really big risk for me. How do you get rid of kidney stones? Well, it's a preventative thing. You have to take in a lot of fluids. Then how do you so get I'm rid getting, of them if you have them? You just wait. You got to pee it out? Yep. Does it hurt really oh, bad? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Like it's probably bad? the worst pain I've ever felt. But I've never broken a bone or anything, so... I don't really have an index to compare. How it to. big was one of them? Can you say? Did you see it? They're, you know, they're tiny, but it doesn't take much because it, the pain is actually caused by them ripping up your kidneys inside. So it's not really the uh, the outro. <laughs> so anyway, it hurts it, all over, dude. Cranberry juice, uh, avoiding things that are high, too high in vitamin C. Okay. Um, oh, I take a ton of vitamin C. I know that can that can lead to kidney stones. And you usually have to like be taking like a thousand percent more than your daily recommended day single day. Oh no! And know. avoiding water for that to be a problem for kidney stones. But damn it, I do that sometimes. <laughs> I'm a camel. I can't help it. Yeah. All right. So I've gone through this four and a half times today, and that's uh, more than I'm recommended. But I'm going to keep going. You know, the water is so. no joke. I uh, ha- I was on a good water regimen for a while, and it does help. It really does. Mm-hmm. It helps with any diet. It does help flush the body from anything you might be losing as well. Yep. It sounds like something you hear uh, uh, over and over again, but when you actually try it, it actually works. And actually, a lot of people say that the the increased water intake on any diet is the reason you lose all the weight to start with, because a lot of it is water weight, and you flush it out. That could be entirely likely, but you, whatever. Bacon, mm. you know? Yeah, bacon. So some other major concerns on this is once you enter the ketosis phase, it's called, which is when you've tricked your body into burning its fat cells instead of intaking carbs, um, that can lead to bad breath in, like, almost everybody. So sugar-free gum is going to become one of my new best friends. Oh man, but you can't chew gum when you're doing a show. Nope. She's going to be stinking up the studio. Just just right here. I'm going to smell it. <laughs> They sit right here, man. I'm going to smell that ass. We'll have to put up a little screen. <laughs> Get like the, one of those little transparent thingies right here. Yeah, like, like on the, Jeopardy. The ones yeah. that go voot. Yeah, oh, oh man. Actually, that if we could have like a little automated switch. <laughs> yeah, <that'd be> cool. <laughs> Okay. Wow, so the bad breath. All right. And of course, there's uh, uh, if you fall off the diet, a lot of people say that it, you gain back all the weight and then some. And that's actually true. Like, but it's wait, true. You mean like you can never go diet. off the diet? Well, uh, any diet should be a lifestyle change. It's not like you go on a diet for two months and then go off the diet and binge but you on hot fudge Sundays. Can't go, and, you can't go without carbs for the rest of your life. No, but this, this, what this diet does is it has four separate phases, the starting which is with almost no carbs, and okay. then it ra- gradually ramps up to a level oh, that see. is actually uh, on par with the USDA-recommended daily carbohydrates oh, intake. I had a great visual for that. Yeah, the but, food pyramid. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually, you get to reattach the uh, the breads there at the bottom. Hmm. Just not go overboard with them. Okay. Well, dude, I'm curious to see how this goes for you. Yeah, well, one that last thing I want to not just warn you about, but warn the entire internet about, Uh-oh. is that there have been a lot of uh, instances that this can lead to emotional instability. Oh, Including great. anger and depression. Oh, man. So in order to, to attempt to stave this off, I've decided to already um, prescribe myself something, um, video games. 
excessive amounts of video games because those take away my rage usually. Oh, that'll be a hard order for you to fill. I know. It's only if somehow you can figure out how to take care of that problem. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for watching tonight's episode. And uh, we're going to be back uh, tomorrow night. Maybe tomorrow night starting our uh, CES coverage. What do you think? I think that's the plan for now. Let's right. let's. That's kind of what I was thinking. The other thing is your wife might pop any day now. That's any true. Any second. That's true. Yeah. Depending on the timing, it might just mean that I'm not here or it might mean there might not be an episode. Yeah. Yeah, because so stay tuned to our Twitters. Probably is a good place to get the updates yeah. on that. Or we'll the, be tweeting or the, out uh, Jupiter Broadcasting Facebook. We'll try page. to we'll try to be good about tweeting out every night. So uh, you can follow me. I'm twitter.com slash chris l i s, and I am twitter.com slash j b jeremy. Nice. And okay. you can also, like I said, follow us on facebook.com slash Jupiter Broadcasting. Now, also depending on when you're watching this, Wednesday, uh, January fifth, mm-hmm. at some point, the Northwest Goofballs probably in the afternoon. And the Pacific time will be coming out. And uh, they have a heck of a show planned for today. Yeah, apparently it was a really big week for them. Yeah. yeah. So if you are a football fan, go over to jupiterbroadcasting.com and check out the Northwest Goofballs. And if you happen to be watching live, they're going to be in here right after us. Yeah. Well, yeah. in a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, speaking of live, what? one little tidbit that uh, might uh, entice you to tune in live. If you tuned in before the show... And joined us over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live mm-hmm. at 8 p.m. Pacific or before then. You would see us struggling to try to arrange Jeremy's new microphone, new microphone yeah. in a way that did not look like we were presenting schlong into his mouth. I think we've almost succeeded. Almost. As long as I don't open my mouth too wide. <laughs> so, always a reason to tune in live is because you might miss that. You might, and why would you right. not want to? So, watch that. I feel funny talking into this now. Okay, everyone. (laughs) Thanks for watching tonight's episode of Jupiter at Night, and we'll see you tomorrow night.